Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts to open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Today is my first Samuel verses 15, 34, through 16, 13. Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Jeba and of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Elib and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature. Because I have rejected him, for the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abednego and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ready, and he had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. 
Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. In the name of the God of Jacob, Send your help from his holy place. And strengthen you out of his Remember all your offerings. And accept your burnt sacrifice. Grant you your heart's desire. And prosper all your plans. We will shout for joy at your victory and triumph in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He will answer him out of his holy heaven with the victorious strength of his might. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will call on the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall down. But we will arise and stand upright. O Lord, give victory to the king. And answer us when we call. Today's second reading comes from chapter 5, 2 Corinthians. So we are always confident, even though <clears throat> we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would have rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also known to your conscience. We are not uh, commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in, our, in outward appearance and not in the heart. And if we, see, for if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died, and he died by, uh, for all so that those who live might live uh, no longer for themselves but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from the human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow he does not know how the earth produces of itself first the stalk then the head then the full grain in the head but when the grain is ripe at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come he also said with what can we compare the kingdom of god or with what parable will we use for it it is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, 
He spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <laughs> You may have noticed in our scripture readings week by week uh, an amazing correspondence between themes of the Old Testament reading and the gospel. That's not a coincidence. I just want to explain to you. We, we follow more or less through a narrative in the gospel. have been doing that now for the gospel of Mark. Come back and we'll be maybe another chapter or two along. But the Old Testament lesson bounces all over the place, but you will frequently notice, I trust, parallels between the theme in the Gospel and the theme in the Old Testament. It's not a coincidence. So today, in the Old Testament reading, we have, if you will, the anointing of David. But for that to take place, we have to, if you will, look past appearances to the heart. That's really what the scripture says. God doesn't judge by appearances. God judges by what's in the heart. So it's time to anoint a new king, the replacement for Saul, who God has rejected as king. And so they go, uh, God you know, sends Samuel to Jesse and with the idea that out of this visit to Jesse uh, and seeing his sons, that the successor to Saul, the successor of the kingdom, will be found. And so they have this little <laughs> parade. It looks like a beauty pageant, really, but it's like, so, well, bring out your oldest son and bring out the next son. Nope, that's not it. Nope, not him either. Nope, not him either. So all the ones that you would have expected to have been chosen get passed over. I mean, it's kind of like a selection process. We have had a whole committee to do this over a period of weeks or months, but instead it's happening in real time with Samuel's visit to Jesse and his family. But So he's gone through all the sons of Jesse that Samuel has shown, and none of them are the one. And so, you know, finally Samuel, the prophet, says to, to Jesse, have we seen all of them? Have seen them all? said, well, there's, there's one left. It's like the youngest, and he's off tending the flock. I mean, so this is like the, the, the last choice, and, and then it's David, and David, and so he may be the youngest, and, and perhaps in other ways at that moment, not the most um, overwhelming and whatever, but he's the one, he's the one. We don't judge by appearances, we judge by what's in the heart. And then in the gospel, we have Jesus talking about the kingdom of God in parables. They say, well, to what can we liken the kingdom of God? And they say, well, it's as if the, the sower goes out and sows seeds, and the seeds grow. And you don't know how they grow, and you don't know where they grow, uh, what, what's happening. You know, something's going on down under the ground, but you don't know it for a while, and then finally it kind of, boop, pokes up, and there it is. But it didn't really happen on your timetable. You might have a rough idea of when to expect it, but and the seed is maturing at its own pace and in its own way. And then it, you know, also talks about sometimes maybe the smallest of seeds may lead to the largest of plants. Again, don't judge by appearances. Don't be fooled by appearances. Uh, as, as we are fond of saying sometimes in, in a church body, it may be small but mighty. Don't judge it by the way it looks from the outside. Consider it rather by what it's like on the inside. And just a little bit of this authentic reality of Christ with us, of God with us, of our sense of being called, of being drawn out, of being drawn together, of being forgiven, inspired, gifted, sent, sent out into the world. I mean, just as at the end of every service, you know, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. I mean, you can't, <laughs> you can't stay here. You've got to use this. You've got to engage it, send it out. But, you know, again, you can't always judge by appearances. Sometimes what seems large may really be small. And sometimes what seems small may really be large. And that's what we hear again and again and again. 
sometimes what seems like the least impressive of the sons turns out to be David, <laughs> you know, turns out to be David. And, and perhaps the smallest little band, a mixed multitude. I mean, think of Jesus' disciples uh, who become Jesus' apostles. I mean, Peter, the rock upon which the church is going to be built. I mean, it's like, you know, he's a, you know, he's a fisherman. You know, he's, got, he's impulsive. He does all these things. At first glance, I mean, this is the rock. I mean, this is the foundation of the whole Christian church. It's got to come out of this bunch of fishermen and a, you know, maybe a tax collector or maybe a, a doctor. But, but don't judge by outward appearance. Don't judge by the fact that all this is taking place in what amounts to kind of a, a backwater of that civilization. I mean, this isn't downtown Rome or something. It's, it's off in the hinterlands. And yet, and yet, in the most unlikely perhaps of places and with the most unlikely perhaps of people, God's word is made known. God's call, vision, gifting, splendor, glory is revealed. And it was that way then and it's that way now. I feel like sometimes we get hooked by outward standards and ways of valuing. Well, this is bigger and this is better. This costs more, so it must be superior. When really that's not the way we're called to judge. You know, the, the biggest may not be the best. The, the most expensive may not actually be the highest quality. It's, it's rather something interior that we can look for and in time begin to discern, to discern a reality that has grabbed onto us and grabbed onto <coughs> others, our Lord and Savior, who draws out in unexpected times, in unexpected ways, and opens unexpected doors. So the sense of surprise, surprise in following the invitation of God, that, that we may find ourselves doing things we would have never imagined to do, find ourselves serving people, with people, opportunities. I mean, maybe it's your family member, or maybe it's your neighbor, or maybe it's the person you just bumped into on the street, but opportunities will present themselves, and they may seem humble in their potential for what can come next. But don't judge by the outward appearance. It may not make its way onto the front page of the, the, the biggest paper or the latest streaming news service, but that's not the way to judge, that there's something beyond that, something interior, something that may look like the smallest of seeds, but may actually lead to the largest of results, the biggest transformation the greatest renewal of life as we follow our Lord who does indeed make all things new, sometimes in very surprising ways. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. <clears throat> For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all now make one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all the people. <clears throat> we pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and word sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let life perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May you we also come and share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for Jim, Kathy, Jan, Aaron, Norm, Marge, Mike, Sally, Shirley, and Ellen. We honor all fathers on this Father's Day. We also remember those in the armed services who have been all night long. We celebrate the birthdays of Nancy Ann Story, Adam Wright, Norm Stoddard, Chris Power, and Hunt Priest. In the anniversary of Darren and Martha Payne, we remember those who have gone before us, Gregory Malone, Elizabeth Bodie McCarty, James French and Virginia Ratner. I ask your prayers for those on our diocesan intercessory prayer list, Trent Trinity Episcopal Church, Danville, the Reverend Joe Chambers Rector, and today in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the bishop, clergy, and laity of the Anglican Church of Chile. I invite your own prayers and thanksgivings silently or aloud. Almighty and most merciful God, you have ordained and constituted in a wonderful order the ministries of angels and mortals, mercifully granted as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may help and defend us here on earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Mm -hmm. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as we read. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share his name. Amen.
Eucharistic Prayer A, page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, for by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. For calling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament 
and serve you in unity, constance ye and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, O mighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.